Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. This video looks at some stress testing that I'm subjecting the 27DM01 motor to. Stock, this motor is rated pretty much the same as the BBS HD. I'm running it currently with a back 855 set to pump out a peak of 90 amps phase and 25% field weakening. The first part of this hill here sees the motor tackle a long and steady climb. This is a really, really good test for the motor. The grades here are between eight to 10% all the way to the top. To get to this point, I already climbed for about one kilometer. So in total, it's about four kilometers worth of climbing. Apologies in advance for the mud that's gonna be accumulating on the lens. It was a bit of a mucky day. And I think I'm gonna to need to get some mud guards if we're gonna keep testing in these conditions. Hopefully it won't distract too much. This is quite a long video, so I'll have some timestamps on it as well at a few key sections and you can jump about. You can see lots of data on the right regarding the power running through the motor as well as speed. The motor holds a steady 50 to 55 kph all the way up, apart from the school zone that we just went through. It's a really good test for the motor. This was the hill section that killed multiple rotors on my CYCX1. In terms of the gearing right now, it's running a 46T back to a 28T. And in practice on the flat, that tops out just over 60 kilometers an hour at about 13,000 motor RPM. If you notice the temperatures at the bottom, you can see that the controller temperatures are rising faster than the motor. And currently it's in my battery bag. So the airflow to it is pretty much non-existent. The motor temperature is also reading low due to the location of the thermistor, but it's not out of line with the results I was getting from the BBS HD in similar circumstances. The temperature for today is about seven degrees. You can see that even though it's on like really steep sections, the motor is still holding you know, a steady 50 to 55 kph. With a long climb like this, you really want to let the motor spin as fast as possible. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Use the high RPMs to do all the work. It's much less stressful to the motor and you build up much less heat. Right now with this motor, it's about finding the right balance of RPM and speed. If I ran back to a 42T at the back, the top speed would be about 45 kph on the flat. But it would also easily be able to hold that speed going up the hill even on the steepest sections because it will be much less stress on the motor. It will be putting less amps, putting less heat into the motor. So at this point, we're coming up to the, to the top of the hill and things start to level out a little bit more. You see, I've actually dropped off the RPM and shifted up a gear. And it is still climbing a little bit though. And you can sort of see a little bit, some of the limitations um, between getting the RPM right and getting in the right gear because it's struggling. Like if I was up to sort of 12,000 RPMs right now, you know, I'd be going well past 60 kilometers now. And it, it is struggling to actually get to that point now. It's bogging it down a little bit. We're coming over the top now and you can see it picking up. But really I probably should have been in a bigger gear going back to that point. There's a balance to be had between the RPM and the gear ratio. See now we're on a bit of a downhill and it's it's rapidly increasing now because we're you know we're heading up to almost 14,000 over 14,000 RPM. Um, but it can't really do that once you get sort of any kind of stress from climbing. Uh, we're coming up right now to pretty much the top here. And past the top we get to open it up a little bit more. Anything that's flat and or a bit of downhill, there isn't much flat actually in this town, but anything that's flat or a bit of downhill, you can easily get over 60 kilometers an hour, which for the current conditions here is plenty for me. Um, this is riding around in town. The reason that I want the bike to perform like this is not to set land speed records. It's so I can keep up with traffic and you can see that quite clearly in the latter part of this ride when I'm riding in and around other vehicle traffic quite a lot more. But the idea being that I don't wanna be over on the right side of the road being passed by a bunch of stuff. So you can hold, you know, 60, 65 at this kind of speed. 
Um, most of the time down here, I'm not really on full throttle. And like that's, that's really plenty for me. One of the things that I really sort of noticed with this section is that once you start to drop the gears down to like a 24T and below, you're not really seeing any particular benefit, especially if you're at a lower speed of around you know 50 kilometers an hour because the increased effort needed to drive the bike forward is just too much and it's bogging down rather than giving the kind of acceleration that you get with the bigger sprockets. Maybe in the summer months I can find somewhere that's out in the open and you know there's no one else around and I can really see what the maximum speed is with this but at that point I think it's also going to be advantageous to me to go with a wider range because set at the back and I think for this bike as it is probably a 42T that has you know like a 38, a 34, a 32 and a 28 and that kind of spacing would allow for more variation in gearing and would result in less stress in the motor overall and give me a nice range of gears to shift through um, at different speeds and at, at different times because having a 32T at the top is not, I, I don't think it's, it's optimal right now. Um, you can see right now uh, it's starting to move a, a bit more with traffic and the bike can accelerate smoothly um, I feel you know a lot safer in this section on the road despite there being a bit of a bike lane for parts of it um, the bike lane's gone now um, and now you're stuck on on a narrow road and with this I'm not holding anybody up behind me um, I don't feel unsafe at the speeds that I'm going with right now I'm wearing proper gear I've got a full crash helmet on um, I'm wearing proper gloves I'm wearing good pants um, I'm wearing good boots so I, I'm comfortable doing this and it's not something that I feel I, I don't feel I'm being particularly reckless riding around in in this style right now I ride very defensively at this point you notice the controller itself is getting past 50 degrees C which means that it's starting to throttle power slightly which is not actually something I was expecting. I'm pretty happy with the motor though at this point. I did take a detour right now and do some off-road using the paddle assist and I rode up to the highest point in town which is probably one of my favourite rides that I can do and I'll cover that in a separate video and you can actually see there's one data point here which is the pedal cadence and that's going to show the average pedal cadence when I'm using the pedal assist on that particular ride. The rest of this video though has lots more footage of me moving with traffic. Uh, my commentary is going to end here though. Overall I'm really quite impressed with the performance of the motor. If it can handle that big four kilometer of climb and allow me to keep riding like this afterwards it, it, it's a good thing and that's about it's pretty much about the biggest stress that it's going to be subjected to most of the time for me in this town is these long climbs and I'm looking forward to seeing how much better it's going to do on these with a wider range cassette and I think that might have to wait a little bit for spring possibly now because we're starting to get snow I am though going to be putting the DMO2 on the bike because it's, it's a lower power motor and I still have stud tyres so I'm still going to be able to do some riding, just not at, at these kind of levels. Uh, if you have questions on any of this, please post them in the comments and you're also welcome to join our Discord where we have a dedicated section for the 27 motors. If you made it this far, a huge thanks for watching and a special thanks to all the channel members that make running this YouTube channel possible. I should have that off-road hill climb video up tomorrow if I find the time and that's for people that are interested in that. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.